right, so I'm starting with these old pair of shorts. They have the denim. So what I'm going to do first is I need to inside out these because it will make a lot of our cutting and measuring a little bit easier. And then we can mark on the inside of the fabric that you won't see as much. Now I do want to incorporate these pockets later on. So I measured about how big my pockets are and I will need about five and a half inches to clear them on either side. So I'm going to make my squares five and a half inches by five and a half inches. So what I recommend for your squares is this really simple way to make a square template. Start with a piece of paper that already has a 90 degree corner and we're gonna fold this edge to this edge here. So if we look at it from this side, we have it folded with edge to edge. Then measure along the side how big you want your squares to be. So if I were measuring and to use this template, I would measure five and a half inches. Let's say that mark right there is five and a half inches. Then at that mark, I'm gonna make a mark there and I'm gonna fold this edge so it's even with this. So, like that, put it over so you can see. Keep that edge lined up there, crease along the bottom. And then if I cut along that crease, when I open it back up, I will get a nice square that I can use as a template. So make a square template, trace it on your denim, and then cut out your eight squares. And now I have a rough square of denim. And also down here on the pant leg, I'm gonna cut through two layers at once. And then I'll repeat on the other leg, and I'll get another cut from this denim up here. And then once I have my eight squares, I will show you the next step. So now that I have my squares cut out, I want to take them from this, and put this crochet border on them because the crochet border is going to let us connect them. So to do this, we will need a ruler, something to measure with, something to poke through the fabric. I have this all here from my snap cam pliers. It's a segment where you add buttons to fabric and you have to be able to poke holes. So that kit came with an awl. Essentially, if you don't have an awl, you need something that you can poke holes through your fabric. If you don't have an awl, you could opt for a thick needle like this. And then once you poke through with this, you can go through with a crochet hook to expand the hole. And lastly, we will need a Sharpie. So the first thing I need to do is I need to mark where my holes need to go. Since I'm using the Sharpie to mark, I'm going to flip this over and mark on the back side that we won't see. So I've got my ruler here. And for this first one, we're just gonna kind of wing it a little bit. These don't have to be precise, but as you can see, this ended up really square, even though our cutout isn't perfectly square. So doing these marks and crocheting around is going to square it up, even if we just kind of rough some of these spots. The trick is we want to be about a quarter inch from the edge. So I'm just kind of roughly eyeballing this. It's like about a quarter inch. And then with my Sharpie, I'm going to make a dot every quarter inch. So I've got the zero lined up on the side. Obviously I'm not marking there, but I'm gonna mark at a quarter inch, put a dot, Put it out at half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarter, two inch, and so on, keeping them evenly along the edge of the ruler. So even if this first side isn't exactly a quarter inch from this edge here, it's still going to work out fairly evenly as long as we work along the edge of the ruler. So if you cut your squares out to be five and a half inches, you should have 22 marks. I'm gonna rotate it and line up my ruler so that way the zero is along the edge and the quarter inch mark is at that hole there. And again, so this is already about a quarter inch from this side. This side I wanna make sure it's about a quarter inch. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'm gonna get 22 marks down this side, marking every quarter inch. So you're starting at the quarter inch mark and going all the way to the five and a quarter mark. Rotate it again, line up my ruler, and mark every quarter inch. All right, now our last side, this will kind of tell us how well we lined up our edges. So if I put my ruler here, if I put the quarter inch mark at this left dot, the five and a quarter inch mark should line up on the rightmost dot. If it doesn't, I'm just gonna kind of center those between them and then I'll do 20 marks in between. And now I have 22 marks on all sides. I'm gonna repeat this with the rest of my squares and then take the awl and punch through each of these holes. So when you're punching through these holes, I recommend starting on the side versus the corner so you get the feel for it. And this awl is really sharp if you're using a needle, so make sure that your fingers are clear on the back side. I'm going to push it through the fabric. 
and I'm going to kind of wiggle it around so that way it's loose enough. So I have a hole there. Go to my next dot and push a hole through with the awl. Again, be super careful with your fingers. Just keep working along all four sides. This is the most tedious part, and then it gets a lot more fun. So if we look back at our first hole right there, it's kind of closing up. That's okay, we've already stretched out those fibers and broke some of them with the awl. They will close up as you go around, but just keep punching all your holes through. And then repeat this on the remaining squares. So once we mark the holes and punch the holes out of our square of denim, it's time to crochet our border on it. Now this one you may notice it's kind of got these folds in it because I undid a hem where there was a cuff. So if you want, you can iron your pieces. I'm not gonna worry about it. I may iron it later on. But for crocheting, we will need a small crochet hook. I don't know the actual size of this, but it's somewhere around two millimeters to 2.1 millimeters. So a fairly small hook. And then some size 10 crochet thread. And I'll link to comparable items down in the description below. So this is going to be a fairly simple border. All we do is work a double crochet, a chain, double crochet in the hole, chain, double crochet in the hole. And then in the corners, we work three double crochet with the chain space between each of them. So it's a really simple pattern and it works up pretty quickly. I'm gonna start on just the middle of a side. It doesn't really matter which side you pick to start with. And I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook. So I need to work a double crochet in one of these holes part way down. You can either insert your hook and work a chain three and let that count as a double crochet, or you can do what I like to call a floating double, which is where you start with the slip knot on your hook, yarn over, insert your hook through the spot you're working, yarn over, pull up a loop through the denim, like that, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. I personally like working them like this because then they all look the same versus having a random chain to start, but it's totally up to you. So now we're gonna start working our pattern around. So we work a double crochet and then chain one, work a double crochet in the next hole, and I like to let this extra fabric kind of fold to the back. I'm just letting my crochet thread work around it. Now make sure you don't catch the, if you have any of these kind of strings from your denim, make sure you don't catch those as you're working. Let's work a double crochet right here. And then a chain. Then a double crochet in my next hole. A chain. Double crochet in my next hole. And sometimes you have to kind of force the hook through because this denim here is a little bit stretchy and the denim kind of shifts and closes the hole, so you kind of have to force the hook through sometimes. But we're just gonna work this really simple double crochet, chain, double crochet, chain border all the way until we reach the corner. Be very aware of your tension. You wanna make sure that your chains aren't so tight that your hook, that your double crochet stitches are being pulled towards each other. So I'm working fairly loosely on my chain so that way the spacing is correct. So work this same pattern all the way along the side and then meet me in the corner. So here we are, I've worked just about to the corner here. So I just, complete, I just did a double crochet in the previous hole. So I will chain one. And then in this spot, I'm going to double crochet, chain, double crochet, chain, double crochet. So I will work the same pattern essentially, just I'm working three of the double crochet in the same corner hole. And I'm working a chain between each double crochet just like normal. So that's my first one and then chain my second double crochet. Chain and my third double crochet. With my third double crochet, I like to kind of turn it and make sure that I'm folding the denim over along the new side. So what I mean is let the crochet thread go over on this side so it kind of pulls the rest of that corner down from working that double crochet. And that's all we do on the corner. So this is kind of what I was saying where the crochet thread's kind of tucking the excess fabric to the back. And then once more, we're gonna go back to our pattern. So we just did a double crochet. So we're gonna chain, double crochet in the next spot. Work a chain, double crochet in the next spot. Work a chain, 
double crochet in the next spot and we'll just keep working the same pattern all the way around where we work evenly along the sides and work three double crochet into the corners. All right, so I just worked a double crochet in my very last hole. So the last thing I need to do is chain one and slip stitch to the top of the first stitch from the round. So I'm gonna kind of catch it right under there and slip stitch that close and then pull through one more time to create a loop. Cut the loop and cinch it off. And that is my border. So you need to work this border on all eight of your squares or however many squares you're doing. And then the next step will be to join our squares. So this is going to be the layout for my bag and to attach them, we're gonna first work these two together and then work these two together. And then we will work these two long panels together right along that seam. So I'm gonna join these two and then I'll show you how to complete the join with these two here. So to join, it's really simple. We're just going to work a slip stitch across. So go ahead and figure out what way you want them oriented. I want the denim to run up and down on all of mine. So when I join these two squares, I'm going to be joining along this edge here. So I'm going to get my thread and put a slip knot onto my hook. And I'm gonna start with the bottom right corner of my left panel. And I'm gonna find that middle double crochet in the corner and insert my hook through there. And then I'm going to take my second panel and find this bottom left corner. And I'm gonna put it so that way they're back to back. So the right side is out on both panels. And on the second panel, I'm also going to find the middle double crochet and I'm going to insert my hook through that stitch as well. So I have the slip knot on my hook, the first panel and the second panel. So I'm gonna just yarn over and work a slip stitch through all of that. So that's the start of joining them together. So now I'm going to slip stitch all the way along. If we look at this panel, I'm going into a chain here. So that tells me on my second panel when I insert my hook, I'm also going to insert my hook into a chain. Like so, yarn over and work a slip stitch. So if we keep going here, my next stitch on this side is a double crochet, which means I need to look for the double crochet on the next side. And basically I'm just gonna keep slip stitching all the way along, keeping my sides, my two panels lined up. So every time I go through a double crochet on one panel, I'm going through a double crochet on the other, and same holds true for my chains. If you're having a hard time with the chain, what you want to think is go under both of the loops on top, right like that, and you'll have this one loop, this one strand on the bottom. Go right through there. Make sure you catch both loops of the chain. Same with the far side. And then yarn over, pull through everything to work the slip stitch. So I'm gonna work this all the way down to the end and I will end on the middle double crochet of the corner. So middle double crochet of this corner, middle double crochet of this corner as well. All right, so I have slip stitched all along this side here, stitching the two sides together and I've worked all the way until the middle double crochet in the corner. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through and cut the loop to fasten off. That up really good and now these two panels are attached so the next thing we need to do is attach this bottom half to this top half and we're gonna do it the exact same way we did the side we're gonna start over here and we're gonna start in the middle double crochet of each of these corners so we're gonna start this and work over to here exactly the same way we did the side and then I'll show you some tips for attaching this middle section here so we will get the slip stitch on our hook with our first panel, our bottom one, we will insert the hook through the middle double crochet stitch in the corner. And then on, so remember we keep them both so that way we put their, the wrong sides, the back sides together. And we'll insert from the back side here through that guy right there, which is the middle double crochet of the corner and slip stitch those spaces together. The first one always seems to be the hardest to me. 
And then we're gonna keep slip stitching along. So I'll go to this next chain on the front one, go to this next chain on the back one, slip stitch it all together. Go to the next double crochet on the front, next double crochet on the back, stitch it together. And I'm gonna work it all the way to about here. All right, so I've stitched along this first half here, and now we're at the middle, basically. So the last space I st slip stitched together was the first double crochets in the corner. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to slip stitch this chain space, the front and the back panel. And then to handle the spot here where it's kind of messy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert in the top of the middle double crochet of both of them and slip stitch those together. So I'll do it on this right panel first, so that middle double crochet. And there's already gonna be some stitching through there from when we work the other side, from when we join in the middle here, but that's okay. We're gonna go with that same spot. We're gonna slip stitch. Once I do it on this side, I'm going to find the middle double crochet on our left panels here. So I'll find the one in the front. Right there. If you're a little bit off, that's okay. Just kind of aim for that middle double crochet. So middle double crochet in the front and middle double crochet on the back. And then of course that chain spot on the front and the back. Slip stitch those together. Slip stitch that leftmost double crochet of the corner together. And from there, we're basically going to be able to keep working it evenly across. So the center will look kind of like that once we've done that join. So I'm gonna finish working across to the end here. And once I work in the middle double crochet of the corners, once I slip stitch those together, then I will fasten it off. So now I have sewn all my panels together for this first side. We did these two here first, and then this is the one we just worked all the way across the middle. So I'm going to repeat this process with my other four panels, and then essentially we're going to put the panels, you know, wrong sides together, and we will stitch them together in a very similar fashion as these joints we just did here. We'll add a handle, deal with our loose ends, and then our bag will be ready to go. All right, so I've got both panels of my bag crocheted together, and they're gonna go together about like this. Obviously with this as the top, so our pockets open up. So we're going to stitch this together, start by coming down the left side, across the bottom, and up the right side. So we wanna kind of turn this whole thing upside down so that we're oriented correctly. And we're gonna start by inserting through here and here in these corners, and start going up and over and back down. So if we zoom in here, so we're going to join with single crochet stitches and it's going to create kind of this edge of a border around it. So I'm gonna start with a slip knot on my hook, insert it through the middle double crochet in the corner on the top panel, and then through the middle double crochet in the corner of the bottom panel, and slip stitch those together just to get that join. All right, so once we have slip stitch to attach and we've chained one, we're gonna go to the same spot where we joined those middle double crochet and work a single crochet stitch. Then we'll go to our next spot, which is going to be those chains between the double crochet. Go through the one on the front and the one on the back. Work a single crochet stitch. And then we'll work in that last double crochet on the left in the corner. So insert through the front, find the matching one on the back panel, insert through both of them, and work a single crochet. And we're going to work the single crochet all the way along. When we get to spots like this, we're going to work it like we did in the middle, where we will work the single crochet stitch in the middle double crochet of the corners, all right, so this is what it will look like, this first edge, once we have single crocheted along it. It's really pretty, I think, and I like having the border kind of stand out along the edge. 
So now I have reached the corner, so let's zoom in again. And my very next spot is going to be that middle double crochet in the corner, which is basically the very true corner stitch. So what I'm going to do is for, to get around the corner to give me a little bit extra edge, I'm going to work three single crochet in the tops of both the middle double crochet in the corner. So I'm gonna find the middle double crochet on the front, insert my hook, find the middle double crochet on the back, insert my hook, I'm gonna work a single crochet, and then the same spot, we're gonna work a second single crochet, Gets a little tricky to see sometimes as you go, but just try to get them all three in there. And a third single crochet, all in those, all in the top of that middle double crochet. And that's my third one. So that'll give you just enough to get around the corner there, and then we're just back to doing one single crochet in every spot. So my next place is that chain between the double crochet, so I'm gonna insert there in the front. Find the same spot on the back and insert through there. And work just one single crochet in that spot. And then in the next double crochet, insert through the front one. Insert through the back double crochet and work just one single crochet in that stitch. And that gets us firmly around the corner and we're just gonna keep working evenly around all along this edge. We'll repeat what we did in this corner when we get to the next corner, and then we will finish up on the side and stop at the top corner. All right, so I finished going all the way around. It's open at the top, stitched together with the single crochet all around the edges. I'm just going to fasten off here, and then I'll show you kind of how it looks from the inside and talk you through a couple other things. So now the body of the bag is assembled. This is it from the inside. Again, I had a little bit of a problem with my sizing because I didn't size them super well. So that's why mine's a little uh, little lumpy on the one side and not laying flat. But with a little bit of stretching, you can get that all to even out. But it's super cute and the last things we need to do are add handles and deal with tail ends. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I'm feeling kind of lazy. So any of these tail ends that are along the edge, I'm literally just gonna tuck them inside the bag. You obviously, of course, can get out a tapestry needle and sew them in, and that would probably be a better option, but I'm feeling kind of lazy, so I'm just gonna tuck mine inside the bag, and then we will add handles. So at this point, our bag is basically done, except for adding handles. There's several options you have for handles. One is to just use your crochet thread and just crochet a handle, you know, on either side. That would be really cute, totally an option. What I'm gonna look into doing, and if it doesn't work, I won't include this in my video, but I thought I'd give it a try, is I'm going to cut some of these seams off these leftover um, denim shorts here, so like this seam along here, and if I can get enough salvage, I'll probably connect them to make a handle. So basically what I've done is I cut out these strips of denim and I'm kind of just looking at what I've got. I cut out along the seams because I wanted my handles to have some strength to them. So this is like from the waistband, this is a seam from the side of the leg. What I'm gonna do is I'm basically going to punch holes in the ends and slip, the, slip stitch them together much like I did to join the panels of my bag together. And then I will just attach them in, with a slip stitch to the top of my bag for handles. The big thing if you're doing this is obviously you want to make sure you have enough denim scraps and then you'll want to cut your handles to be the same length. So I'm gonna attach a couple here. So I've chosen which pieces I'm going to use. I'm gonna use these two for one handle and these three pieces for the other because they'll work out to be about the same length. I may need to trim a little on the edges. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to come to my edge here and using my awl, I'm gonna poke some holes through it. I'll probably do maybe four holes going across and then I will slip stitch them together. So I've punched four holes in this piece and four holes in this piece. So I'm just gonna put them side by side with the wrong sides facing out. And I'm going to insert my hook through corresponding holes, bring my thread to the back, and yarn over and pull through for a slip stitch. Go to the next hole on both of these. Slip stitch them together. So now this first section of my handle is joined. I'll do the same here. And then on the very ends, I'm going to punch four holes. 
can work the double crochet, chain one, double crochet border like I did on these. I'm only gonna work it on one side. You could go all the way around your handles if you want, but I'm gonna work that on just one side and then I'll attach it to the top of the bag. So I have now finished attaching my handle pieces together. What I need to do now is I need to make sure they're the same length. So I'm just gonna line them up, kind of give them a little bit of stretch and cut this one that's a little bit longer so that way they are the same length roughly. And here's what I was talking about of what to do at the end. So this one is wide enough that I can go, that I'm gonna punch four holes in it. So one here in the end, middle, second one, third one right here. If you're having a hard time pushing through these really thick sections, you can get your thing of yarn, your thing of crochet thread, and put it kind of on top and just use that as like the backing because hopefully if it goes through the, so you can get it to go through your fabric, but it just goes through the openings in the way the crochet thread is wound up. Having a little bit of a hard time getting it out. So that's a tip if you're having a hard time punching through some of these thicker sections of denim. But once I do that, I'm going to work a double crochet in each of the holes and between them I will work a chain. So in this rightmost hole I'm going to work a double crochet, which I'm doing that what I call a floating double. And chain one, double crochet in the next hole in the denim. Chain one, double crochet in the next hole in the denim. Chain one, and double crochet in the last hole in the denim. And the number of holes and double crochets I did was kind of just arbitrary based on how wide my piece was. And I'll fasten that off. And then if I come to my denim bag, I will figure out where I want to attach the handle. And I will slip stitch this handle piece onto my bag in the same way that we did the panel joints. So start with a slip knot on your hook. Insert through the right most double crochet from your handle. Figure out where you want to start attaching it and go through a corresponding double crochet on the bag and work a slip stitch. Then go to that next stitch, which will be a chain. Put your hook through the chain in the handle and then through the next chain in the body of the bag. We'll have our first handle join. And of course if you feel like you need more you can always attach tack it down with some more slip stitches at different points. You can even work a slip stitch directly into the holes on there however you think you need to to get it strong enough. This is how I'm choosing to attach mine but there's not really a right or wrong way just kind of what works best for your project. So let me finish attaching my handles and then I'll show you the finished results. So here is the finished bag and I've got the pockets here of course. Again, like I mentioned with the handles, you can do the same border on them, you know, punch the holes out and do the border. I just didn't feel like doing that on my bag. At my base here where I joined the handles, I actually changed it up for my first one and in the end ones, I worked two double crochets. So I did a double crochet, chain double crochet and then fastened it along six and it just gave me a little bit stronger of a hole. So that's an option as well. But this is the finished bag. I'm super happy with how it turned out. So if you plan to try this bag, let me know by giving this video a like. And of course, subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I post new content. Happy crafting!